Do you or somebody that you know have episodes of nausea, possibly with vomiting? Learn more about cyclic vomiting syndrome, how genetics can help you, and how a mitochondrial cocktail can help with functional disorder. I'm Dr. Richard Bowles, a pediatrician and a geneticist in Pasadena, California. Cyclic vomiting is a functional disorder. Functional disorder means it's due to the function of the cells, tissues, and organs, not their structure. So you can do an MRI, you can do an upper GI, you can do an ultrasound, you probably won't find anything. It doesn't mean that it's not real or in the head or not important. Functional disorders can cause just as much pain and disability as structural disorders, and functional disorders are far more common. There are many other functional disorders, some of which you've heard about, irritable bowel, migraine, gastroparesis, fibromyalgia, interstitial cystitis, chronic fatigue syndrome. I can go on and on. There's a whole lot of them. And they're all related to cyclic vomiting. In fact, patients with cyclic vomiting are likely to have other functional disorders as well. Some people may have just CVS and nothing else, but most of them have at least one more functional problem. Cyclic vomiting syndrome, also known as CVS, is diagnosed based upon the history that the patient or the family presents to the physician. There is no official lab test for it. It's really based upon the information that's provided to us. If you have stereotypical vomiting episodes, what I mean by stereotypical is that the episodes are all similar to each other. They may be different from that of another patient, but they're very similar to the episodes that you otherwise would get in that patient. Um, if they're abrupt, you know when you're in an episode and when you're not. It's different than chronic vomiting in which you vomit a little bit here, a little bit there. In cyclic vomiting, or it's called cyclical vomiting in Europe, in that syndrome, you have intense episodes with a semi-abrupt onset. And then the episode goes away and then you're normal without nausea or vomiting in between. Nausea is the main part of an episode. Vomiting is also part of it because it's part of the name, but nausea is much more important. People with cyclic vomiting also usually have lethargy or fatigue. They're really out of it during an episode. They can also have other symptoms which are individualized. Some have abdominal pain. In some cases, that's very severe. Some will have a headache, including um, migraine in which they don't like bright lights or loud noises and they can have many other things as well. If you have episodes that occur and you have several episodes, not just one or two, and you have essentially no nausea or vomiting between episodes, then by definition, you have cyclic vomiting syndrome. One thing I want to mention is that older patients, adults and sometimes adolescents may have some nausea between episodes. In fact, it's very common, but it's to a lesser quality than the nausea that they have during episodes, which is much more intense. Well, first of all, there's no real test for CVS. Oftentimes I'll look at the urine ketones, which are elevated in an episode, but that's unproven and untested. They're often positive in my experience. Physicians will look at tests to make sure it's not something else. Um, in particular, malrotation of the intestines can look like cyclic vomiting syndrome and an upper GI series can be used. There are some other rare conditions, including metabolic conditions, brain masses, and kidney obstruction that the physician might also want to rule out with testing. Almost all disorders, particularly common disorders, are due to an interplay of genes, usually many genes and the environment. CVS is no exception to that. As a geneticist, I look at the different genes. In fact, I sequenced hundreds of people with cyclic vomiting syndrome to look at their genetic potential to try to figure out why an individual has CVS and then to use that to try to treat them. I found that abnormalities in ion channels energy metabolism, and genes needed for peripheral nerve function are very common in CVS. When I get the results, it often, it usually helps me to treat that individual patient by treating the cause of CVS in that patient, not another patient. Unfortunately, in reality, most physicians don't treat CVS very well. In their defense, there's thousands of rare diseases and CVS is very complicated. Expert physicians will take a look at aspects of the patient, such as does it look like migraine? Does it look like it's an energy metabolism problem? And then use that information to decide which of the treatments are useful. 
um, amitriptyline, propranolol, cyproheptadine, and mitochondrial treatments such as coenzyme Q10 and carnitine are commonly used. I am a geneticist and I use genetic information, particularly the whole genome sequence, meaning the sequence of the entire DNA, or at least the sequence of the coding genes in decisions on how to treat. So I look at the genes that are involved in ion channelopathies or in mitochondrial function or in peripheral nerve function. And then based upon that, look for abnormalities that I think are likely causing CVS in that individual and then direct treatment based on that. I also realized that the vast majority, if not all cases of cyclic vomiting have a mitochondrial component of energy dysfunction. And I found that a mitochondrial cocktail is basically helpful in almost all cases of CVS. In some cases it gets rid of the episodes entirely and others it helps so that less medication is needed. In my experience, the outcome in CVS is much better if an expert takes a look at it. And particularly if not just speaks to you and examines the patient once, but actually follows the patient. And there's only a few experts in the world and they're only in a few locations and that makes it very difficult for people to really get expert care. In my own patients, I find that cyclic vomiting can be stopped or put into remission in the vast majority of cases. It's not in every single one. I still have a few patients that are having episodes, but very few. And I'm following about 70 patients right now. And I've had several that I followed before that I'm no longer seeing. What I do differently, as I mentioned, is I sequence the entire DNA or at least the exome and look to see what I think might be contributing to the vomiting episodes, and then I use that information to decide what treatment to use. Because my research has shown that mitochondrial dysfunction or energy metabolism issues are extremely common, in fact, probably universal in cases with cyclic vomiting syndrome, I rely on a mitochondrial cocktail to help that in all cases, regardless of what the genetics shows, because I find that it works regardless of the genetic abnormality. I used to use individual components such as carnitine, coenzyme Q10, riboflavin, vitamin C, alpha lipoic acid, magnesium, selenium. I can go on and on on that. And many of my patients were on 10, 20 different compounds that they would have to buy online or in specialty stores. It made it very difficult, but the outcomes were really good. A few years ago, I teamed up with a couple of partners to form neuro needs and we make products, in particular, they are dietary supplements that help patients with neurological disorders. And CVS in, is really a neurological disorder, even if it involves the nerves of the gut many times. And we put all of those together, including many more components into a product called Spectrum Needs, which is a powder. It's used for, for patients with mitochondrial dysfunction, including patients with CVS. I found that many of my patients went into remission on Spectrum Needs with the addition of a more CoQ, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Energy needs is almost identical to spectrum needs, and we came out with it in November 2020. In energy needs, it is in capsule form instead of in powder form. And the difference is really is if you want a capsule or if you want a powder. Whether you take energy needs or spectrum needs, I highly recommend that you take additional coenzyme Q10, also known as CoQ. CoQ is present in both products but the blood levels in my patients are not high enough. And I find that when I give them additional CoQ in the form of ubiquinol, which is a highly bioavailable form of CoQ, that their blood levels go up and that they do much better. In fact, it, CoQ is so important that it's really the CoQ plus the additional supplements that are in energy needs or spectrum needs that seems to be helping my patients the most. The ubiquinol form is really important most CoQ is ubiquinone, but it doesn't say that. It just says CoQ on the label. Make sure it says ubiquinol on the label. Neural need cells a form of ubiquinol, which is even more highly bioavailable than most out there. And it's called QNEEDS and it's available at the same website. Mm -hmm.